From time to time, I'll be showing you weekly trade setups. I know weekly ATR stop losses are huge on those setups. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of those signals without having to use a tiny trade size. Hi, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuides.com. Did you guys miss me? <laughs> Casey covered me for a few days so I could plan out the next 30 days or so of our videos. Sheesh, the planning is the worst part. <laughs> but it makes the videos much easier to do when it comes time to do them. Okay, I need some feedback from you guys, so make sure you pay very close attention right now, okay? I preach about testing all the time, right? Well, testing might be the most underrated thing in trading, and let me tell you why. If you make one small tweak to your trading, it could be a total game changer and increase your performance by as much as double. In fact, I've made some changes to my own strategies that have yielded big results. I would have never discovered what to tweak if I didn't do testing. Yeah, yeah, I know, it sounds boring. But let me tell you, the results will be anything but boring. In fact, testing works for anything you do in life. We just made a small test and tweak to this YouTube channel, and that small change led to thousands of additional views. The small things matter, and you will only find those through testing. Do you guys want me to show you step by step exactly what I do to find the hidden gems that are in my own trading? If so, please leave a like and a comment below. I only do what you guys want. This is your channel. If I get at least 200 likes and 75 comments, that'll tell me that you really want this. Let me know what you guys think about this. We've done quite a few weekly trade setups over the last few months. I like weekly setups except for one small detail. The one and a half ATR stop loss is usually huge. So to maintain your risk parameters, you have to use an itty bitty trade size. So you wait way longer for the trade to play out and you make a tiny bit of profit. Today I'll show you how to use these great setups without having to use tiny size. I've also got a great setup on a stock called Stoneco Limited. That's Stoneco, not Stone Cold. <laughs> but first thing, I've got a bunch of charts to look at. Then later on, today's trading maxim. Once again, it's hump day, so let's get over it. Remember to click the subscribe button and hit that bell so you won't miss any of these lame hump day jokes. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the open trades. I'm still waiting for this U.S. dollar Mexican peso set up to hit the first target. Looks like it's attacking the low right now. So a break could be nice and carry us right to our target. We'll see. The Euro Swissy has been pushing down pretty hard, especially yesterday. That's kind of nice. Parabolic SAR has finally gotten below my break even, which is right here. And so my current stop is at the current PSAR level, which is 108.57, and that locks in 38 pips. Now keep in mind that that PSAR will move during the course of this whole candle right here. In fact, I moved it down two pips since I initially placed it there last night. The weekly gold setup triggered last Friday right here. And I went long at 1562.44-ish with a stop at 1505.65 and the first target at 1600-ish. It's pushed back into the triangle right here, but it looks like it's pulling back a little bit right now. so. That's not a problem until Friday's close. As long as Friday closes above 1555, I will stick with this trade. Of course, if Friday closes back inside this triangle, we'll go ahead and take the loss right then. The weekly Bitcoin bullish wedge triggered last Friday right there. I went long at 8180.81. That's a mouthful, isn't it? My stop loss is 64.25.47. First target is 93.51.04. Looks like we're almost halfway there. 
This descending triangle set up on the Ethereum Classic looked really nice, but now it's just totally blown. Now sometimes when they push up here, and if they stick around and come back inside the triangle, and the volume continues to decline, then I'll think about changing the pattern. But today, this is just looking very bullish, so I'm going to consider this pattern completely gone, and we'll scratch this one off the list. This is the daily Litecoin MAX setup I showed you last week, and it's closed way above the 100 here. What we were looking for was a push below the 20 EMA here, but it didn't happen, and it's up here above the 100 on huge volume, so this could actually be a bullish reversal. So we're going to scratch this one off the list and wait for the 20 to move back above the 100 before we start looking for another MAX opportunity on Litecoin. I really like Boston beer. I don't know why. I'm not a real big beer fan, but I like this company. I've traded it a few times. Uh, this daily triangle set up on Boston beer I showed you last December. It looks like it could trigger. Doesn't look promising for today, but it could trigger at any point since it's pushing down. Now this long wick down here suggests that, uh, you know, maybe it's done with this down move for right now. But we'll see. I think Casey may use this to do a live options video trade for you guys. Anyway, keep an eye on it. This is the Platinum Daily Ascending Triangle I showed you last week. As you can see, the price has broken the $1,000 line that I put in here. The actual top of the triangle would have been down here at 996 or so, but I moved it up to 1000 because that is a huge psychological level, and I wanted to see a close above that level before I entered it. So watch this today. And uh, you might consider taking a long on this. Don't forget to check the volume. Actually, <laughs> the volume's already in order, so this could be a nice trade setup for the day. Okay, before we talk about Stone Co. Limited, let's talk about how to trade these weekly patterns without breaking the bank. My U.S. dollar Mexican peso trade is a great example of what I'm talking about when I say that weekly trade signals, while often powerful, are way annoying to trade. They take a long time to hit the first target. As you know, we've been waiting on the USD Mexican for about five weeks now, and they have such a huge stop loss that to maintain a 2% risk, you have to take a very tiny trade size to accomplish that. Let's take a look at an alternative that will use that built-up energy of a huge weekly pattern and a huge explosion but be able to trade a size sufficient to make it worthwhile and to get in and out of the trade more quickly. Okay, we just looked at this weekly USD peso chart. This yellow vertical line right here is the candle that triggered the trade. So this was the week of December 9th. It closed on December 13th, and on that day, if I hover right over this line, you can see that the weekly ATR at the close of that bar was 3,457 pips. I know that sounds like a huge amount, but this is the USD Mexican we're looking at, and it moves a huge number of pips every day. So anyway, our stop loss would be one and a half times that 3,457, or roughly 5,186 pips. Once we know the stop loss, we can look over here at the trade size calculator which is at the Trading Strategy Guides website, and I'll give you a link to that below this video. And all you have to do is enter your account currency here, the pair that's being traded, USD Mexican, the balance in your account right here, and for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna use a $10,000 account. The risk percentage of 1%, now you know that I will risk 2% on this trade, but I open two positions. So all I'm doing right now is calculating the trade size for each position. And then the stop loss in pips, 5186. You click the calculate button, and it will show you that you can trade 3.6 micro lots. And of course, you can't divide up micro lots, so 
you can't go over to four micro lots. You can't round it up. We'll have to trade three micro lots on each position. So we'll put two positions in for three micro lots each. But what if we use the daily ATR to calculate our stop loss and first target instead? We'll still wait for the weekly trade signal, but when we enter the trade, we'll drill down to the daily chart to get the ATR. So let's take a look at that here. Okay, so December 13th was Friday of the week that we entered this trade. And if we hover over this day right here, you can see that the ATR is only 1307 pips. Multiply that by one and a half and we get 1961 pips for our stop loss. And we'll pop back over here to the position size calculator. Again, we'll enter the account currency, the pair being traded, the account balance, the 1% risk percentage, and the 1961 stop loss, and click Calculate. And now you can see that we get three times the trade size. So we can now trade nine micro lots on each position instead of just three. But that's not the whole deal. The best part of this is that our target of 1,307 pips was hit over here on December 27th. It came very close here and here, but no cigar. Definitely hit the target right here. So we are able to take half off here for profit and move our stop to break even. Now obviously we were taken out right here at our break even stop. I'm way more comfortable with trades that have hit the first target because obviously after that I consider it a free trade from there on out. Plus the nice thing about this particular trade is we would be out of this with a little bit of profit and using the weekly numbers that I have right now we're languishing for five weeks and I've tied up six micro lots on the trade and if you have a US account that can kill your available margin. So just remember there's no reason to use the full week numbers on a weekly trade signal. In fact, I prefer to use the daily ATR numbers for weekly signals, but I haven't done it on the channel before now because I wanted to be able to explain it first. This example was a Forex instrument, but this applies to all other markets that you trade. We often see big patterns on index futures and metals, so that's a great place to use this technique to shorten your trades and allow you to use bigger size. I'm most comfy when the trades hit the first target in a day or two, so that's way more likely to happen due to the smaller targets. If you have any questions about this, hit me up in the comments and I'll explain it further. Be specific with your questions though, okay? Okay, time to look at the StoneCo setup. StoneCo Limited is a customer service company in Brazil. The card has a nice ascending triangle on it. An ascending triangle consists of a strong resistance level here and a series of higher lows that form an uptrend and puts pressure on the resistance level until eventually it breaks explosively. As you'll often see me do, I think the top of this triangle is here at 43.50 ish, but I moved it up to 44 so we don't take it unless there's a close above that psychological level. Here's the trade plan. We're going to buy a daily candle close above the ascending triangle, or above $44. On the breaking candle to enter a full size position, we want to see the volume bar reach up to the volume average right here. If it doesn't quite reach the average, but does reach 75% of the average, I'll open a half size position to reduce risk. You can calculate the percentage by dividing this volume number by this volume average and your result should be 0.75. If I don't get at least 0.75 then I'll stand aside on the trade. Your stop loss will be one and a half times the ATR. Your first target will be one times the ATR. So let's say for example this breaks above this line and we get a close right up here. That'll be your entry point. On the day that it breaks Look down here at the ATR, multiply that by one and a half, and set your stop that distance behind the entry. And then put your first target one ATR above the entry. 
If after entering the trade we get a candle that closes back inside the triangle, we'll take the loss right then and not wait for it to hit the stop loss. Our intention is that a breakout above the ascending triangle or above 44 should be explosive and hit our target fairly quickly. If the momentum goes away, we want to shut the trade down without taking a full stop if possible. When the price hits our first target, we'll close half the position for profit and set the stop loss to break even on the remainder. We will then follow stops as price moves in our direction until the market takes us out. Now these two rules are the very definition of cutting your losses and letting your winners run. Typically I do this using two positions. The first position has a stop loss and a take profit. That position will close automatically when the first target is hit. The second position will only have a stop loss and that's the position that will be allowed to run. When the first target is hit, we'll have to manually move our stop loss up to break even on the second position. I will only risk about 2% of my account on each trade. And that's the setup on Stone Coal Limited today. Remember, my intent here is to tell you how I manage these trades. If you've already got a good trade management plan, use it. Things that work for me may not work for you. You have to understand your own mind to find the best strategies for your trading. And that's my intent for the trading maxims, to help control my emotional impulses and keep me on the straight and narrow path. And speaking of trading maxims, a maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, rule of conduct, or a proverbial saying. The purpose of my maxims is to motivate me to discipline in trading as well as other areas of my life. I suggest you start your own list of maxims, things that you can say to yourself while you're trading or doing life to make sure you always do the right thing. Feel free to borrow from my list. And today it's Tim's trading maxim number 63. When you can't control what's happening, challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what's happening. That's where the power is. In trading, you have absolutely no control over what the market does. You can only respond to what the market is doing. I like to make a distinction between responding and reacting. Reacting is a thoughtless move and will often get you in trouble. Responding is where you take a second to collect yourself and then do whatever is appropriate for the situation. It helps if you have an advanced plan to help you make a quick decision in amongst the emotions you may be feeling about what's happening. But even if you don't, I challenge you to take a beat to think about what's happening before you respond. I think you'll find your life will be less drama filled that way. Remember our daily Stone Co. trade plan here. We're going to buy a daily candle close above the ascending triangle or above 44. If the volume is not quite average, go half size as long as it's at least 75% of the average. Your stop loss is one and a half times the ATR and your first target is one times the ATR. And remember to click the link below to the trade management video for more details. Sign up for my free trading picks email list to be sure you don't miss any of these great picks. I send out about three or four trading picks a week from all different markets and you'll get to see them first. And the best thing is, it's free. I'll put the link below this video. <coughs> hey guys, I just wanted to mention this briefly too. This Finance and Markets newsletter comes out on Wednesday mornings at 9 and this thing is awesome. I This is the second one I've looked at and I really enjoyed this. But particularly, there's this one article here, You're Never Too Old for New Ideas. This guy, Momofuku Ando, invented ramen noodles when he was like 47 years old. Ramen noodles. Imagine being the inventor of ramen noodles. <laughs> 2004, he sold 70 billion servings. Anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff in this newsletter. You guys should check it out. I'll put the link below the video so you guys can see it. Be sure to come back to Trading Strategy Guide's YouTube channel every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for my new videos. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. I'll either answer your question right in the comments or in a training video or both. And remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. Also, remember to tell me what you think about doing a short series on how I test my strategies. Comment below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up below. Have a great hump day, and I'll see you next Friday.